Um, I'm talking specifically to our not my nonprofit uh, like brothers and sisters out there. Is that, <laughs> um, we we have to resist the martyr culture of nonprofits. You mm -hmm. know, um, the the community doesn't get better if you get worse. So mm -hmm. you really have to think about like those basics around sleeping, eating, water, therapy. Um, you know, um, really think about how do you take care of yourself in all phases, and to understand that sometimes. Um, the work may be good, but it may not be good for you. Welcome so to this week's episode of Leadership Sound Bites with my special guest. My special guest was sent to me by Baljeet Sangha. And so I'm going to say thank you in advance because Joseph Griffin, Joe, if you will, is a freaking awesome human. So I've loved yeah. chatting with you, Joe, before, um, and then obviously look forward to the conversation that we're going to have today. So you are executive director with Youth Alive and Youth Alive is a public health violence prevention organization. And I know when you and I chatted, the footprint or the expanse of it is not just around this specified geography. And I think a lot of it too has to happen. We can virtually connect with people that we couldn't do it before. So maybe I couldn't drive out to the limits before, but you know, I don't care if you're in the Netherlands. I mean, I had a podcast with in, in the Netherlands, you know, that we were able to come together. I didn't get on a plane. We were just able to connect virtually. Right. So I um, I am looking forward to this because I enjoyed our chat beforehand. So I know you have a quote or at least something that you live by to kick us off by. So I'm going to hand it over to you, sir. Great. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, uh, I guess the... the um... Quote, well, you know, that, that I live by and, uh, having the conversation with you, Michelle, kind of helped me crystallize it is that a good last impression is as important as a good first impression. And that's been uh, really true for my career because I've had multiple places where I've worked at multiple times, including Youth Alive, where this is uh, actually my third time <laughs> working here. <laughs> and I never saw myself coming back, uh, you know, so many times, but having built relationships and built community um, has really helped put me in this position where now I get to support this organization uh, from the, the executive director seat. I love it. Um, I, and the thing that struck me when we were first talking, it was about don't burn those bridges. Don't think just because you're leaving that that, that door is permanently closed, right? And a mm -hmm. lot of times I think what happens when we talk about leadership, it's like it could be that the growth that you need right now isn't going to happen at the organization that you're at. You know, they're not ready or don't have the opportunity for you to step in um, and you're ready for something more than what you currently have. Mm -hmm. And I think the same thing happens when we go back. It's like, OK, we went out and we learned about different organizations, different perspectives, which, by the way, is super powerful. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then we can come back. So what are some of the standouts for you that I mean, like you said, you're back in the executive director role that clearly you weren't in that role when you left the last right. time. Yeah. It, yeah. I tell people it took me 15 years to to move across the hall because <laughs> I sit next to my first office in our organization. And I think, I think Michelle, I think you hit the, the nail on the head is that um, we, like for me, I was pulled to do other things, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I, I definitely wouldn't be the executive director I am today if I would have stayed at Youth Alive Mm -hmm. the whole 15 years um and sometimes sometimes we're pushed right uh, out of an organization because there's just something that that's not there for us or there's something that we don't like um and there was some of that in each of the times I, I've moved in my career but I have been fortunate that I've been pulled into other spaces right mm -hmm. so um and I think though the the thing that I've been really uh good about is that you know Sometimes when you want to leave somewhere, you start to build it up in your head. Like, you know, you start to like build, well, these are, because it's, it's a way to kind of, well, at least for me, sometimes there, there's that guilt, right? That uh, I have unfinished business. I can't leave right now, especially if you're doing uh, community-based work or social justice work, nonprofit work. It's part of the culture is that, mm -hmm. that no, you, you put it all out there for the community. Um, and so you try to distance yourself from mm -hmm. it, you know, by like, well, I don't like this, don't like that. And all of those can be true, but they don't have to be your lasting memory. And so mm -hmm. for, for me, every time I've left an organization, 
um, I didn't take my foot off the pedal, you know, as I, I, I you know, then kind of cruise on my way out. Um, I really did once I made the decision to leave is think about, well, what can I leave the organization with? Mm -hmm. Is there, um, maybe I'm not going to get to that end point that I thought I would, but is there an end point that I can now identify and mm -hmm. we can create some closure? Uh, and so that's helped me a lot. Um, you know, particularly with Youth Alive, uh, the first time I worked here was my first job after getting my master's in public health. Um, wow. Much smaller organization. There was like 12 or 15 of us. Um, and then I left after, after a few years, there was a leadership change. There was another opportunity for me. Um, and I left, but I, I stayed in good standing with the org, uh, with the people, right? Now it's not a org, with the people who work. Yeah. You know, I, I stay connected. I still play fantasy football uh, with the, <laughs> the organization. And then, you know, there was uh, there were things that they needed that staff couldn't do. Like they would need someone to facilitate a focus group and they didn't have money for it. But mm -hmm. I could come in and do it because they knew what I could do and I knew what they needed. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a time when I went back to school to get my doctorate and I really needed to feel reconnected to community work. And so there was a short period where I was leaving the job I was at and when school started and Youth Alive had this new position open up um, where they couldn't fill it. But they're like, Joe, could you take on this position for 10 months to buy us some runway? It's like, absolutely, you know, because I stay connected. And um, so we knew I was going to leave, left for my doctorate. While I was in my doctorate, they had different consulting uh, opportunities where like, Joe, we need somebody for this. We need somebody for that. And all of this happened because of the relationships. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, fast forward to uh, be, finishing my doctorate, having worked for a couple of years. Uh, and I, I get the um, call from the ED at the time to meet. And with, I had no idea that she was even considered leaving. This is like right? out of left field. Yeah, out of left field. You know, I, I had actually just started working locally in Oakland again. And she was one of the folks I was like, yeah, we got to reconnect because I'm doing this other thing now. And um, and at that time, the job I was at had no thoughts of leaving, no anything. Um, and then we, we talked and she was like, I, I would like you to put your hat in the ring. And again, it was like one of those moments where I was being pulled to something. And um, yeah, that's kind of how, how I got here was, you know, having built those relations, the organization I was just at, um, we're still on good terms too, because yeah. we're all working locally in the same space. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I, I think with there again, it was like, what can I give back now? When I, I go to their meetings, I, I sit in a different seat, but yeah. I still champion their work because just because I'm not with them doesn't mean that we're all not trying to get the same thing for our young people and, and the communities that yeah. we work with. So it, it's been really crucial for me. You know what's interesting is is I listen to that stuff and I and I and I, I take you take me back to my career and at different points that I've left. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you find this to be true, but but when you make the decision that you're leaving for whatever reason, moving out of the area, you're ready for you know, the next thing and the organization isn't ready for you to have that next thing yet, but there's an opportunity somewhere else is I look at all those loose ends. Do I have mm -hmm. SOPs for everything I do? Have things been handed off? Are there projects that still need to be done? And I go into overdrive to get that step finished yes. before I leave. And so I find myself working harder <laughs> yeah. after I gave notice than, than what I did <laughs> You know, yeah. at the level that I was working before. And so it's like, I don't want loose ends. I want to make mm -hmm. sure that that the organization doesn't feel the void. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've definitely been there. I would say, um, I think I still do that. I think one of the things that, that stopped me was um, a little bit, right? Just or a little bit that, that uh, where I tell myself, it's okay. Like, give yourself some <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be fine. So I'll, I'll say two two uh, stories. Um, one, so I was working at a hospital, um, and uh, actually with Balji, you know. So shout out to Balji. Yes. Um, yes. So uh, we're we're working at the same hospital in different areas, but um, I was getting ready for um, I was getting married, and then we we're going on our honeymoon, right? And I was like, all right, this is the longest I've been away from my team. <laughs> I'm going to develop all of these, um, yeah, SOPs and, and <laughs> SOGs and like. All, all you know algorithms and so I like I'm building I'm going in on Saturdays and I'm just like because uh, at that time me and my fiance at the time you know is now my wife we didn't have kids we were both in that mindset just like like this is how we work right it yeah. was 
So I was building all of it and then I felt good. And then I went on my um, honeymoon and I came back and some of the things that I had planned for came up and I was like, oh, did you use the algorithm? And I was like, no. Did you, no. <laughs> did, did you go this process? No. And I was like, what happened? And they're like, well, we did it like this and this is what happened. I was like, oh, that was, well, yeah, that worked. Um, and so, you know, I started, like, I did all these pieces and it taught me, but my my team, they already felt ready. You know, yeah. um, I think it helped to have those, but it might've helped more me than them. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I learned, I learned to like, trust my team a little bit, or, you know, yeah. that point, so you got to let people, especially if you put them in position, like let them find their way. I think, I think a, a bigger lesson I learned was at that same hospital. And so I ran a department where we, we had touch with everybody who worked at the organization. And some of the things we did, like the trainings we held, people needed them to work like clinical folks, like mm. nurses couldn't work without them. Physicians couldn't work without them. And so it felt like a really important position, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Everyone had my cell phone. I also carried a pager, and I'm I'm not that oh, kind wow. of doctor, right? But it's like, okay. but they 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 gave me a pager, and I remember one week there was something that was happening, and you know they came to me, and I was coming in early, and then they're like, Joe, we have to create you um, someplace to sit outside of the CEO's office because we need updates from you like that fast. We need to be able to like to like. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, right. So they're like, but in the moment, in the moment, Michelle, I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, like if we don't do our part, you know, things can fall. I was like, I was all into it. So that whole week like almost like a command center setup. Yeah, it was a command center. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah, yeah. You got it. It was a command center. Okay, because that's what so, it feels like. That this yeah. is an so, emergency so, and we we have to hear. Okay. Yeah. So you know, I would uh because uh the, the campus was so big, our our office was in a, a whole different building. So I would come in. And you guys didn't have phones or anything. We did, but it was a type of leadership that was like, this is how we were. Like I said, I had a pager. I had okay. phones. Like okay. we, had, no, we, <laughs> we had all of that. Okay. Um, but so, but it was it was just an intense moment. It, and it was also out of the norm, right? It was yeah. like, we're going to do this. Um, so I'm set up. I'm doing my work, doing these constant, like, you know, feedback loops. And this is the most time I've seen the CEO, right? Just because oh, it's yeah. a big organization. Um, so I'm, you know, I say hi to her and stuff. And then by the end of the week, things, you know, things go over. Well, we had a little bit of chit chat and it's like a Thursday and she's like, remind me your name again. You know, I'm like, oh, cool. I was like, that's nice. Um, but here, so, you know, Friday happens. And it's like, all right, we're, we're all calm down. Um, Monday comes and, um, the CEO is gone. There, there's been a leadership change. Oh, like overnight. You know, at least from where I sat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't um, from where I sat. It was, you know, and they, they explained it to us well, you know, yeah. in the moment. Um, and they're like, hey, this is what's happening. So I don't know if there had been a bigger plan for it, but yeah. it changed. Um, and the hospital didn't close. Mm -mm. You know, Monday happened, Tuesday happened, Wednesday happened. And that's when I I learned, you know, and like in, in hindsight, I learned from that moment. I was like, you know, there is no role I've had where the doors are going to close and the lights mm -hmm. are going to go off if mm -hmm. for some reason I wasn't able to show up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I just have to trust that whatever I've done, you know, has set my team up to succeed, you know, mm -hmm. uh, going after this. And mm -hmm. and it was the same thing with my work, uh, that, that department when I left. Um, uh yeah they didn't have to take a week to to figure out what's going to happen next yeah um you know things kept moving um no one lost their license it was you know things keep moving and so mm -hmm. I think that was the thing where for me it's, it's always trying to to check in and not put that pressure on myself that yeah the lights are gonna are gonna go off and that um things aren't gonna move because I'm not there like I play a role but it's not like a keystone or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I, I learned a lot from, from that moment because yeah, here was someone who was very important and um, uh, yeah, you know, the, it kept going and kept thriving the organization. Well, kept, it's, yeah. it's interesting you say that, right? Cause what comes to mind for me is um, no one's <laughs> indispensable and, yeah. and those are good lessons. And Joe, the I have I have to assume, and I want to ask is, what is your role as a leader 
in the fact that when you do move on um, mm. or when you do go on vacation or when things happen or you win the lottery or whatever it may be, yeah. right, right, is that your team is capable and, and that falls on leadership, right? Because you, you've got two, di two different, well, there's probably different versions, but I'm just going to sim simplistic it down if that's even a real term. <laughs> um, into you've got leaders who hold all the knowledge and all the information right mm -hmm. keeping it to myself i'm just going to basically command and control i'm going to tell you what to do military was known for that yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know you you don't you don't independently think for yourself you mm -hmm. you do what i tell you to do and i'm not going to give you any insights as to why i'm choosing this over something else you're just going to do it yeah and in those situations, when you remove that leader, mm -hmm. you could have some problems mm -hmm. okay? because the team doesn't understand the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Your leadership style, I think, tends to fall in the other bucket of I'm I'm a member of this team. Mm -hmm. And it's important for all of us to have knowledge about why these things are happening, what's coming. What are your thoughts about it? Because we all have different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Um I'm curious what your thoughts are around that and where you see yourself and your leadership in that and contributing to the fact that you're not indispensable or making sure that it's the impact isn't there as if you were. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I think that that I definitely fall more into that democratic style. I think yeah. by by nature I'm a connector. Like I like connecting people. I like keeping people around me who are smarter than me in different mm -hmm. ways. Like I, I don't feel the 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 need to know everything or to mm -hmm. to do it uh, my way. And so um, I think, like especially at like our, our leadership level, um, I'm always looking at where are the opportunities for um, our leaders to not only make decisions but also where are the opportunities for them to be able to fail and to learn. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's the key is that um and I'll say also this though it is um what I'm learning is though that I have to balance that with also recognizing that you know as executive director I do have authority and there mm -hmm. I can't always crowdsource the decision you yeah. know sometimes uh, there are moments where especially I have to be honest like um you know do I actually have a um you know a way I want us to go and am I, you know, just kind of soft trying to get people there? Yeah. Like, am I volunteering, telling people, you know, uh, what to do? So I think there's a big part of that 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 I have to be honest with myself on those pieces. Um, but for the uh, the big part of what I do, really, yeah, it's like how are we getting ourselves to be confident and comfortable in making decisions and making yeah. it together? Yeah. Um, I think well, so one of the things that that I brought into our executive team is this I see this idea of uh consensus building it's like mm -hmm. how do you actually uh make a decision uh how are you ready to move forward even if you all aren't a hundred percent on board mm -hmm. so you know we we use the whole like seven point like uh you know uh rating method and you know oh that's interesting yeah if, if it if um if anyone on the team gives it a one out of, out of seven or two out of seven we can't move forward we got yeah. something fundamentally it's like, wrong. It's like fist to five. Same yeah, exa that, it's exactly yeah. fist to five. Yeah, that's it. it's, that's like exactly the, yeah it. it's like fist yeah. to five. So, so yeah, if I've got twos or ones or zeros, yeah. then we're not moving forward. What has yeah. to change for, for you to go in? Yeah. 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 And for us, that was, it was new, you know, because yeah. the, the previous process was if there was, uh, the ED was the tiebreaker, um, you know, okay. and Rather than that, because there was a lot of moments, so being new and having an executive team that was largely intact, you know, there was a lot of process that went through the ED, but the rest of the team didn't see. Um, yeah. And so I was like, okay, we got to unpack this because uh, they had grown as an organization together. And so there was a lot of good decision making that they had that was just inherent to their relationships. So mm -hmm. we need to figure out, well, what does this actually look like as a process if we're going to make these decisions together, we're still figuring it out. You know, it's, uh, it's you know, it's not that we we've got it down, but we're getting more to a place where um, I would say initially, you know, you wouldn't get ones or twos, like because it's just like, hey, is this volunteer? Well, uh, there's, there's, a fear of, there's a fear of failure too. Yeah, exactly. So people are like, I don't know that you really 
I don't trust you. If I were to say this, are you going to like take me out at the knees? You know? Yeah. Because, is yeah. is it the next thing I bring up? Are you going to give me a, a one or two back just to? Uh -huh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like the the thing that I did to um, get yeah, at that actually was the building relationships with my executive team members outside of those meetings. Um, yeah. If I think that really. And then me also giving quick yeses to certain things outside of the meetings because they they got to see that I, where I was willing to take risks, where yeah. I was like, yeah, let's try it. Let's see what would happen. Yeah. Uh, and to really get over that fear of failure, I think, um, uh, has been a big thing. And, you know, with our work, the the fear of failure has a lot riding on it. You know, it is the, um, and so we do have to be careful because um, we are talking about people's lives um, in, in the world. Oh, yeah, you say yeah. that though, and that's because I mean I've been in healthcare since '98. Yeah, you know, supporting and not the direct patient care, but mm -hmm. at some level in healthcare since '98. And what I find is that because we're that people are in healthcare, there's this automatic connection to well, we can't fail. Mm -hmm. Okay, but not everything has a life attached to it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. so I think it's one of those things and you're going to find it in your work too. Yes, there are decisions that you make that are impacting someone's life. Mm -hmm. And there are other decisions or things that you experiment with that there's not a life or death at the end of it. Right. Yeah, and so I think it's like not reacting to, oh my gosh, this is all a five alarm fire or, oh, this has everything because we're in this. Mm -hmm. Is that where can we experiment and learn more? Yeah. So that maybe the next time around, it gets a little bit better than what it was yesterday or the day before. Yes, absolutely. And and now that we're in this space, um, coming, I'm fortunate that I took over the organization as a mid-sized organization. So now we're about 60 staff almost. Um, That's cool. So a lot yeah, of 10 to 12. Yeah, no, it, it, it's it's amazing, you know, and, um, and some of the agreements we made, I knew in context at the time they had to be made yeah but like you said we're um we've grown but our field has also and so like um one of the things recently we were having this conversation around one of our programs which is 24 7 365 response uh mm. within an hour um, wow. and we were looking at it and we were like well you know how realistic is this mm -hmm. on principle yes we wanted to do it but we were talking about doing this with a staff of 13. Mm. I was like, well, how do we even do that? Um, and we're hearing that the burnout is a part of this, um, this team's culture. Mm -hmm. um, while we're having this conversation, our city partners are also having the same conversation. Like, is mm. this, is there a benefit to this, this response time? So um, our, our uh, leaders met with the team, uh, the cities as well as some of our other partners to really talk it through and we realized that we had all agreed to this because on principle, this is what we needed to do. Yeah. Uh, but what came out of it was we actually need to respond within 24 hours mm -hmm. and really lean on the expertise of our uh, teams on when to respond. And it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, we were, we were promising it, but it didn't make sense today. At some point it did, but now that we know more and we yeah. took a step back, there, there's actually things we could do to be more effective and to preserve the health of our team members. Well, it's interesting you say that because my here's where my brain went. My brain goes, mm. if you're in the room with me at all for any length of time, mm. you realize it just goes 50 different directions. But I got to thinking when you talk about response time in an hour, what's the intention around it, right? And a lot yeah. of times it's we want to make sure people feel heard. Yes. Not being ignored, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so my brain went to levels of response. Could there be some automated acknowledgement? And maybe there is already. Mm. We heard you. We got the signal that you're tapping us. Yeah. And the team's going to get back to you in mm -hmm. whatever amount of time. So all of a sudden, you're relieving the anxiety of people feeling like they're going into a black hole. Yeah. Um, but I think there's degrees of response, right? And being yes. really clear on what that is to where we're going we're gonna to let you know we got it. And it's, mm -hmm. like, it's like those emails. Have you sent an email and, and people, no one ever says, got it? <laughs> yeah. And you're like, you're like, you're like, did I check in? Did, should, did yeah. you get it? I mean, did you, <laughs> you know, I mean, especially when it, there's a request attached to it, right? Hey, yeah, da -da -da -da. Yeah. you know, and all people have to do is thanks, got it. And, but you sent it off and you got radio silence. Yeah. 
So that's where my brain goes too, is are there different degrees of response that, mm -hmm. you know, you can still satisfy what it is because there is a, I want to be heard. I want to know that someone out there cares. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then to know that help's coming and when it's coming. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, that, I mean, I think, it, yeah, that's, that's uh, kind of the, the direction we're going is. Yeah. When do because in our work, there's or there's this um, concept of the golden moment, right? This is yeah. the moment when people will be receptive yeah. to your work and when you want to be available. And what we're starting to challenge right now is, are there more moments than we realize? Mm. You know, are there, and even the moments that we thought we needed to be there, is that actually the right moment? Or yeah. what if we try it this way? And the only, But the only way that we've done that is to make sure that yeah, we're, we're staying or really listening to our team members who are yeah. doing the work in the community today because the Thank community, you. the community today like took a, a, a huge jump post pandemic than uh, where we were trending before. Um, so we're really relearning, uh, you know, what it means uh, to work in Oakland and in the surrounding communities. Yeah. Um, you talk about post pandemic because that, that is a, um, an interesting um, tunnel that we all kind of live through mm -hmm. um, and there's no there's no going back right to what yeah. it was and I think it's like you and I here virtually mm -hmm. right here this wouldn't have happened so easily mm -hmm. pre-COVID pre it, it wouldn't yeah. have um, because I had senior leaders that were not comfortable going on camera Mm. I was not comfortable going on camera. Yeah. I remember in the organization I worked for, we we have Skype and you'd have some people that go, oh my God, Skype, turn your camera on. Yeah. Other people like, uh, no. No, no, no. Yeah. Um, but you fast forward to today yeah. and we're like, we're four and a half years in, almost almost yeah. five years in, March will be five years. Yeah. Um, and it's commonplace. Mm -hmm. so I mean it's like hey let's jump on a zoom call or hey let's facetime or let's do whatever and it's just this whole different way of engaging with people that before we thought you're too far away and it's like mm -hmm. you don't you don't have a computer or some electronic device nearby we're not that far away right right no that that is true and it, it makes me think of even um how much better the technology is like uh, you know, I have the the blur on behind me. But yeah. I remember, you know, start of the pandemic, uh, like my head would always blur out with the background because uh, I was like, I was like, oh, these systems are not ready. I have my my green screen uh, that I put it behind me to, you know, try. To, I had like all this set up and you know yep. for for working online. And um, now now I rarely use any of those things because it's just like the technology is better, right? It's, oh, uh, it's night and day, and that and more yeah. AI is gone into it, and so it's yeah. hilarious. And I'm curious about you and your evolution as a leader, right? As you've gone through stuff, you're a joy <laughs> to chat with, by the way. <laughs> um, and I've heard comments like you, you said before we hit record, you you got a holiday party with yeah. your organization coming up and it's friends and family, right? Mm -hmm. Or family with it too, which I think is cool, a blend of both families. But Joe, how's your leadership style changed or the word that comes to mind for me is become more refined mm. um, from where it was before. What thoughts do you have? Yeah, I think being in this role has really um, challenged me to be more intentional about how I'm a leader. Um, yeah. I think one, I was thinking about this earlier, is that I have had to have more of a tolerance and you you'll hear me say failure a lot right um and but i i view failure as a way of like growing but i've had to have more of a tolerance for failure and for um kind of letting things go and finding out what happens later um than any role i've had before um because i think for me this is the first role i've had where um one of my strengths had always been that i could just work harder you know, mm -hmm. I was like, like, I will wake up before you. I will keep going after you. Um, I am. I'm the energizer bunny. As well. yeah, yeah, like, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not going to be um, uh, the smartest person at any one thing, but I can work until it's done, you know, yeah. and then um, and then I went and did my doctorate and the doctorate kind of like really like was like, yeah, you say you can do that. Like, 
keep going, right? And so it really, it, and also you played on one of my worst habits, which was fitting work in every single corner of life. Yeah. Like you have a little bit of time, do a little bit of work. So you're a good packer too. Yeah, 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 exactly. Up, yeah. I, I, in the I'm a, re I'm a recondo <laughs> everything. Like I like, I, I love all of that. Uh, um, so it drives my wife crazy, right? She's like, she's like, uh -huh. you don't need to fold underwear like that. Just like- We got room, we got room. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right there. Like why is everything vertical? <laughs> um, but, um, but yeah, but in this job, this is the job where it's like, oh, it humbled me. Cause it was like, there is the level of complexity. How many, we have seven programs, you know, each of them runs different, including, um, and then on top of the programs, we have, uh, the back office stuff. So I run the, the operations and oversee admin also. Yeah. So then I was like, there is just, I tried, I was like, I'm going to just, I'm going to keep working. And then, I mean, I'm two years in, I'm still in the transition. But I'm just honestly, I would say probably in the last six months, getting getting to a point where it's like, well, um, if I say yes to all of this, mm -hmm. what else am I saying no to? Bingo. Um, you know, Bingo. Um, and I haven't found the balance yet fully, right? You know, during the week, um, you know, I, I'm lucky if I, I get two hours. Uh, it's usually about an hour with my kids before they go to bed, right? right. But I try to get home, you know, to, to do that. And on um, the weekends, uh, Saturday, and at least till Sunday night, I'm not looking at work, you know, unless someone texts me because uh, we have some 24-7 uh, yeah. uh, strategies. But I'm like, because I found I was saying no to my family. You know, mm -hmm. I was saying no to um, friends, you know, going out. Um, yeah. And for some people, that's, you know, hey, if you're in the mode, like I said, when I was younger, I was in the mode where I could say yes to work all the time. Um so now I'm having to really get more comfortable with the fact that there are going to be things that just aren't done at the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. And that's okay. You know, again, the lights aren't, aren't shutting down yeah. or aren't shutting off. Um, so I think that's changed me there. I think, um, I think probably one of the things in being in the, um, the ED seat also is, um, really understand my relationship with uh, the folks I work with. So I've always been really big on relationships. You know, um, the the idea that you're not gonna remember the work, but you're gonna remember the people. That's mm -hmm. that's always been it for me. I've always remembered the yeah. people. Um, one of my favorite people in the world that my kids think is blood a blood relative is actually my first supervisor ever after undergrad. Like she, oh, she's part cool. of my family. Uh, yeah, shout out Karen G. You know, she uh, she's always been there. For us. So it's always about the people. Um, but I think what's new in the ED space um, for me is that, you know, kind of understanding that um, I can enjoy and get along with people. And I also recognize there's always a power dynamic. Yeah. You know? So there's not a, there's not really moments where I let my hair down in the mm -hmm. office much. Oh, I mean, you know, I mean, theoretically, <laughs> you know, in the Apparently office. Apparently you let it down and it just fell off. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Because, you know, it, it will, um, it can freak people out. You know, if, yeah. if like, if I'm overly worried or I may be getting a version of somebody that is not the same version that everyone else gets. Mm -hmm. And so if there's moments where I have to, you know, understand like what's actually happening in, in a situation, I have to be able to to recognize that and say, okay, let me really understand what's going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, what is really helpful though, is that uh, my associate director, who's my second in charge, yeah. um, he's known me since the first time I worked here. Um, so there are moments, you know, there, there are certain things where we have an agreement, like, hey, if it, um, at this level of strategy, or, you know, like something that's got like, like we can have space where it's like, mm -hmm. we need to decompress. Um, but, uh, but like, you know, kind of like the the emotional support, that piece, I've yeah. to find that from other EDs at other organizations. Yes. You know, and build a peer group, um, which was which has been essential for me. I, I don't know, um, especially for a lot of the EDs who are taking over post lockdown, mm -hmm. um, there's just so much change uh, mm -hmm. going on. I took over for an ED who was here for 13 years. Um, so culture shift has been huge. Big time, big time. Yeah, and we yeah. we started moving back in person at the same time. Half of the team uh, came onto the organization during the pandemic. So okay. they worked together in person before. Yeah. So yeah, you know, I think I think um, uh, really dealing with that, I, I've had to find other folks 
in my, uh, you know, my space who are also dealing with uh, the same type of uh, situation. Thankfully, I have an older brother, uh, Zeke, who is also an executive director, but in the for-profit sector. Yeah. Um, so we can have really candid conversations and just. Well, and I think, yeah. I think what you're talking about, Joe, is it's super important for leaders at all level because you can't, well, let me back up. It's important for leaders at all level to be able to have that space that they can have, to your point, real conversations. And I'm going to say that they can go below the line, that they can vent. Yeah. Just freaking vent and complain for a minute. Yeah. And it's not going to be for people that are typically in your report, you, your reporting, because they that's, but it's like, who is that person or people for you that you can just go, I just, I just need to vent for a minute. Okay. I'm back now. Right. Yeah. Um, and then you can be um, move forward. And I've had CEOs and other leaders that have done that. I just need to go below the line, Michelle. It's like, okay, go. That's All it, right. Yeah. So now you're going to come back. Now, how are we moving forward? But the thing is, is a lead, if, as, as you reach that point to be that leader in the organization, mm. Um, you have to look out and go, okay, fine. What am I role modeling? I do need to be transparent. I do mm -hmm. need to be vulnerable. But to your point, it doesn't mean that I'm bringing all my hopes and fears yeah. and I share with everybody because they don't have the perspective and the experience that I do. So yes. if you were to tell a frontline person, okay, what, what you're feeling, what you're dealing with and what your concerns are about X, Y, Z, they may freak out. Mm -hmm. where you're not freaked out about it, you're worried and concerned, they don't have context or the experience to understand what that means. And they will go completely the other way. Yes. Um, so you're absolutely right, is we need we need to be careful about what we share um, and how we share it. But we and we also need to be transparent and vulnerable on what it mm -hmm. is. But it doesn't mean I'm going to do everything, you know, puke it all out there. Well, so, you know, it, and it reminds me of, so we recently... We had a, um, a measure passed in Oakland that funds violence prevention. It had to be reauthor reauthorized for nine years. But word was starting to get out. Like, well, word had been had got out that, you know, this is this uh, measure that we're working on. Um, but with some of our frontline staff, they were starting to get really worried because the because um, what they were hearing was that this isn't going to pass. Um, <laughs> yes. And we were um, we were at an event. Um, and uh, one of my uh, frontline team members, you know, kind of in front of the group, there's about 15 of us was like, like, I heard this isn't going to pass and I'm worried. And so, um, you know, in that moment, you know, it, it wasn't appropriate for me to be like, oh, don't worry about it. You know, it was right. because and, and so so but we talked and I, I heard her out and I was like, hey, I hear you. Um, and I was like, right now isn't the best time for me to talk about, but let me get back to you in just like 15 minutes because I was, I was on my, I was in transit to this other piece yeah. of a day. I came back to her and I was like, I was like, Hey, yeah, let's talk a little bit more. And I, and I just, I shared with her. I was like, I was like, you know, I am worried too. Um, I was like, but this is what we're doing. And this is also what it means because in her mind, she thought that the funding would end at the end of the year. It was the end of the world. And it yeah, was it was. And we were going to, we were going to downsize. I was like, that's not the direction we're going. I share with her some of the strategies that I was looking at. Yeah. Just to like let her know that, hey, I've been thinking about this. And and I was like, you're right. We haven't shared it. I was like, I apologize for it. I own that because that's the big thing I've learned is that um, I can't over communicate. And sometimes like no, I like to move fast and I'm like, oh, you can't move too fast because you give people whiplash. Yeah. Um, but from there, we had we had a full um, like a lunch and learn on the measure, what people Good could do, Good like, yeah, give you. people, like, we aired it out, my policy director, uh, led it, and, um, and she was there, and, and, like, I would say, maybe a third of the staff showed up, mm -hmm. um, and so we were able to dispel some of the, the, the myths, um, and thankfully, you know, it was a, it's been a good ending for us, yeah. um, but, yeah, even with that, you know, there, it was different levels, one of the things I learned also is that, um, and this was something we had to change a little bit at the organization, is that, we can't communicate everything to everyone all mm -mm. at once. Mm -mm. Um, like I had to start with the executive team, then the directors, then, mm -hmm. but like pretty short order. But yeah. at the same time, it's like, 
like a front line staff person is going to ask their manager, well, what does this mm-hmm. manager is going to ask? They're going to go to the person they yeah. feel safe, that they so, trust. And, yeah. and if, if they didn't feel like, like I prepared them with enough information to ask those questions, then it was like, well, Joe, you guys didn't even prepare us. Like you, yeah. you didn't let us know what we could tell our staff to have yeah. a conversation with them. So we've been working a lot on that. It's like, you Good know, what you. is the order of how we communicate? Yeah. Well, that's huge. And I go back, I got trained in pro size change management. And so mm. all the stuff that you're talking about is around the intentionality of communicating all that stuff. And it's mm. really cool that you've learned it from real examples and you're going to go, Houston, we got kind of a problem here, an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and I, and I think that's, that says a lot about you as a leader. So oh, I could freaking talk to you for hours, dude. <laughs> You're 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 a cool guy. You're a cool Thank guy. You, Thank you. Uh, I I would love though to hear to wrap up our time today. What what one or two things, Joe, out of all the stuff that we talked about, would you love people to walk away with? What stands out for you? Yeah, I would say probably for for new leaders or you know, going into new positions, um, give yourself grace. You mm-hmm. know, this this is the first time, maybe, that uh you're in a leadership position, but it's not gonna be the last. And there's no one right way to do it. Um, so give yourself grace. And then um, I would say probably the second thing, and I was saying this even more for myself. Okay, is, good. Um, <laughs> You're like, is, I'm still learning this one. Yeah, I'm still learning this. And it is it is the, um, the self-care and the taking care of yourself, especially if you are a person who's driven by passion and you're working in communities you care about, you're doing work that is personal to you. Um, you have to have the routines that keep you in the work. Um, mm-hmm. I'm talking specifically to our not my nonprofit, uh, like brothers and sisters out there. Is that, <laughs> um, we we have to resist the martyr culture of nonprofits. You mm-hmm. know, um, the the community doesn't get better if you get worse. So mm-hmm. you really have to think about like those basics around sleeping, eating, water, therapy. Um, you know. Um, Really think about how do you take care of yourself in all phases and to understand that sometimes um, the work may be good, but it may not be good for you. And so mm-hmm. just to make sure that you have time to reflect with yourself, um, to make sure you are where you need to be. Um, mm-hmm. this moment. Um, thank you. You're so freaking insightful. Uh, there's a, there's a couple of things that came to mind for me. My mentor said is that what's, she would say, what's a little bit better look like, right? So we're mm-hmm. all looking for that mm-hmm. silver bullet, but the reality of it is it is the drip that fills the bucket, right? Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, and the yeah. other thing is, and it speaks to what you just said, Joe, is that today's not the only day. That's right. And a lot of times we tend to react and respond to stuff as if it has to be done today. That if I don't get it done today, then, you know, basically the world's over, the thing, all things are going to end. Mm-hmm. And what you're talking about, like, I think you said it earlier, is that if we say yes to something, recognizing we're saying no to something else. Mm. So are you saying no to that something else that you're really okay with saying no to? Yes. So yes. Um, I just, I love it. I would love to have you back again. Yeah, um, that'd be and- great. We can continue the conversation. Uh, and so I so appreciate your time. The, this has been Leadership Soundbites with Michelle and Joe Griffin. And uh, until next time, please like, share, subscribe, and have a freaking awesome day.